In this video I will be making a Crolean because somehow it isn't sold anywhere and I need it for another project. The synthesis is relatively accessible with easy to find chemicals, but it should only be reproduced in a fume hood because even the tiniest bit of acrolein vapor will burn your eyes. It was also used as a tear gas in World War I, which should tell you enough about how horrible it is. To do the synthesis, I'll only need sodium chloride, glycerol, magnesium sulfate and hydroquinone. The reaction will take place in a double distillation setup. Because the reaction takes place above 200 C, it will boil over a large variety of impurities. So all the acrolein and the impurities will get condensed and reach the receiving flask. This receiving flask is then also heated to only boil off the acrolein, which will then go through the short path distillation apparatus, condense and collect in the second receiving flask. So to start it off, I add 210 grams of glycerol and then add 150 grams of magnesium sulfate on top. As you can see, the magnesium sulfate just sits on top of the glycerol, so I just mix it around using a glass stir rod. Then I attach an addition funnel and fill it with 300 grams of glycerol. To the first receiving flask, I add 150 grams of sodium chloride. And on top of that I add 5 grams of hydroquinone, which will hopefully reduce polymerization of the acrolein. Then I close off the flask with a stopper and move on to the second receiving flask. To this flask I add around 1 gram of hydroquinone. Now, the last step is to cover the whole apparatus in aluminum foil. Since acrolein can start to polymerize due to light, especially when hot, it is best to minimize any light exposure. Before I cover up everything, I heat it to 250C and make sure something starts to come over. After a while, it starts to boil and the first drops are arriving in the first receiving flask. Now that I know that something is coming over, I can cover up the whole apparatus. What is happening during the reaction is that glycerol is catalytically dehydrated by the magnesium sulfate, which forms acrolein and water. If you want to know more about the mechanism of this reaction, I will put a link in the description. A little while later, the thermometer in the short pass started to read around the boiling point of acrolein, so I checked the flask and we can see liquid has already started coming over. Knowing that we are now receiving liquid in our second receiving flask, I can start opening the addition funnel and let the glycerol slowly drip in. Since the short path can only attach the flask with the smallest neck, I have to swap them in between. So I remove the flask and attach a new one that contains a little under 1 gram of hydroquinone. I do this process a few more times until I feel like not much more is coming over. After I'm done, all that is left in the flask is a thick black tar and the first receiving flask has a lot of liquid in it. After cleaning it all up, I combined all the liquid from the small flasks into a larger flask and I am left with a yellow liquid. Because there is water present with the acrolein, I put all the contents into a separatory funnel and separate the layers. Now on the left I have my acrolein and on the right is the water layer that I drained into the sodium hydroxide solution. Because it was heavily contaminated with acrolein, it all started to polymerize and form some orange junk. To remove any acid that might be present, I add some scoops of sodium bicarbonate. But nothing happened and all of it just sat on the bottom. Because it all just sits there, I can simply pour it into a flask without needing to filter it. Now all I have to do is distill it again. So I set it up for a short path distillation where I can distill it directly into the bottle. I cover up the apparatus again and distill over everything at 53C. When the thermometer reached 55C, I remove the bottle and start distilling over some more around this temperature. Because I want the main bottle to be as pure as possible, I removed it just to be sure and collect some more acrolein with questionable purity which I can use for some testing. 
When the temperature started to increase past that, I poured the contents out into a bottle containing some hydroquinone. So the final yield of acrolein is a sad 10%. But at least I also have a bunch of tar. For storage, I wrapped both bottles in aluminum foil and then I flushed them with some argon. And I will store both of them in the fridge and hopefully they won't polymerize before I will use them. In one of my next videos I will use acrolein to do a green yard reaction.